Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh, and I, we have Secret Santa today. This is why I have this amazing sweater I bought that's too small. <laughs> There's no returns because it was final sale, obviously. Look at this thing. Santa and Jesus hanging out and having a party because Christmas is all about Jesus and Santa. <laughs> But uh, yeah, today we're just going to dive into Full Lid Friday. There's a couple updates I want to give you guys. I want to talk about a few things that are kind of happening in pop culture, family vlogger world, and in the world in general. And, you know, I always do my COVID updates and all that kind of thing. Um, and so that is what's happening. Full Lid Friday, a little later on today, around 6 p.m. EST, which is Eastern Standard New York time, we are doing our Secret Santa. And before we get to that, I'm going to find someone to throw this ball into the net for, because that's what I do now. People like to see me. I got one yesterday. She won a hoodie, and it's exciting. Today it's a t-shirt, because hoodies are expensive. So I'm gonna go through my comment section. I'm gonna find a commenter who I like. There's this girl named Ashley Rose. I see her on my comments a lot. I don't even know if she likes me or not, but <laughs> I see her in the comments a lot. Ashley Rose, this one's for you. T-shirt. Oh, it was close though. All right, let's go. So one major update, I had to come back into this video, like right when it was done, because someone had sent me an article on Instagram. Um, so you didn't know that. I don't know how to tell you that, but yeah, I had to come back in. And so it's a Katie Sorensen update. So Katie Sorensen, so BuzzFeed comes out with an article right now, just today. Someone dropped the story. The couple accused of trying to kidnap a mom influencer's kids have been completely cleared by the police. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs is what's happening right now at the Sorensen household. First of all, if I'm Katie Sorensen's husband, I'm like, shit because this is this this was clear to a lot of people not like me i want to i want to give people the benefit of the doubt i like to give people the benefit of the doubt i think it's fair to give people the benefit of the doubt i want to believe her story and but there was a lot of red flags and i i raise those flags but i also want to be aware that when you're a commentator you got to protect yourself by saying by being fair and i'm not a I'm not a journalist, so I don't have to be that, but I just wanted to, you know, I still want to believe the victim. I always want to believe the victim, right? I still think it's safe to land there even after this bullshit that's about to go down. Anyway, all that to say, she clearly did this for clout. We Now we know why. Because the day after she dropped that video and went super viral, she did a, she posted on her other Instagram about how she's doing some MLM, you know, me to come join my thing and buy some MLM shit. So everybody was like, yep, there it is. She definitely capitalized on it the day after. Didn't even wait a little bit. Didn't even wait a little bit. So basically, after this, I I see a massive cancellation in her future. Like she she started with six thousand subs, went up to eight eighty thousand, and either she's gonna come out as a villain or she's definitely just gonna be gone. Which I think it's gonna be the latter because she seems not like the type of person who would double down on being douchebag. So anyway, here's the case. BuzzFeed News came out. Police in Northern California city of Petaluma said Thursday night that they found no evidence of a crime after investigating allegations by a mom influencer that a couple tried to kidnap their kids in a local craft store. Police officials said they have in, 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 instead found evidence that supports the couple's versions of events. So they're talking about the couple that she accused of trying to kidnap her children. Katie Sorensen's tale of barely escaping a pair of kidnappers at her local Michaels blew up social media this week after she posted on her Instagram account, and we we do, we dove through that whole thing. BuzzFeed News is also News has also made a contact with a family member of the couple who said the couples are of Latino descent and have five children between them and two grandchildren. BuzzFeed News is not naming the family member since the family's name has not been made public. They are horrified at the allegations against the couple who say they were shopping and speaking out about their own grandchildren, not Sorensen's kids. In the store, they accuse Sorensen of racial profiling. Now, in this day and age, that's going to be a death knell. And, you know, you want to make sure that you're covering both ends of this. But, of course, she did accuse them of that and then went on her, on her Instagram and blew up virally about this couple. And eventually they were going to get out who they were because there's footage everywhere. And then remember when they had the picture of them buying the thing? So right there, I think the police were alluding to the fact that she was misleading in her thing because they said, hey, look, she's buying something. And in her video, she said they... they they came right after me. Anyway, it goes on to say, this isn't the first racist, racist injustice to occur in Petaluma by a long shot, but we are definitely grateful in this case, the truth was rightfully pursued, they said. Yeah, because imagine being this couple. In two videos posted on her Instagram account, Monday Sorensen told her audience she had been a victim of an attempted kidnap. 
And remember, Kendall Rich did this exact same thing too. She said, I stopped at potential kidnapping. I want to follow up on that story next. She described how a couple had followed her around the store, made comments about her children, and then the man had even lunged at her stroller. After her video went viral, the Petaluma Police Department released a statement of the incident saying, Sorensen provided new details in her video she had not given her initial report, which I definitely asked. I was like, what? When they interviewed her, Sor when they re-interviewed Sorensen on Monday, she repeated the new allegations. She was definitive that the couple approached her children's stroller and that the male reached for it. She stated she would testify to that fact and that she wanted the couple prosecuted. The department said in a press release. Okay, so she said she did want them prosecuted. Police said that they were able to identify the couple soon after and contacted them through social media. The couple immediately responded and have been cooperative. While acknowledging they had shopped at Michael's and were the couple shown in the photograph, they denied the allegations being made against them by the reporting party. The subsequent investigation, police said, supported the couple's account. And here's where it's going to get shitty for Sorensen. To date, the investigation has proved no evidence or witnesses corroborating the account providing the reporting party. Evidence gathered has served to support the account provided by the couple from the store, the release states. Police said the case is now closed unless new evidence emerges. Sorensen didn't immediately respond to a request for comment, but previously told BuzzFeed News she had no intentions or underlying motives to share my story, other than to encourage fellow parents to always remain vigilant. Yeah. The family member said the woman who was accused of attempted kidnapping had called on Tuesday and said that she had recognized herself in the photo and the police that the police had released. At first, the woman was mostly confused, but then grew scared when she saw her image was being shared on Save the Children pages online. The family member said they questioned the motives of Sorensen to report the incident and then pressured the police via social media when no police report was filed after her initial report. Well... Somewhere in her mind, she sincerely misconstrued this brown couple innocently shopping in a craft store and discussing their own grandchildren as activity was somehow threatening to her family. Ugh. According to the family member, the man and the couple had been wearing a Black Lives Matter hoodie during the incident. Okay, so... Wow. It's no surprise that this year has been one of the most... Been, it's no surprise this year has been one of turmoil for everyone, given the pandemic Black Lives Matter movement calls for police reform, the election... I am, however, surprised at the climate of hate it has created in the smaller parts of the country, such as Sonoma County, they said. So they're basically saying she racially profiled them because they wore a Black Lives Matter hoodie. The family members said they hope this incident will serve to shed light on racial profiling in suburban and rural communities. The media typically draws attention to these sorts of struggles in large cities, but it's, it, isn't anyone paying attention in requesting the more rural areas, they asked. A local activist group called Indivisible Petaluma has also accused Sorensen of racially profiling the couple and called for community members to stand in solidarity with him, meaning they're going to go basically... Katie Sorensen and family are about to peace out of Petaluma and wherever they live because their house is going to get targeted. For sure they are. Wow. They plan to speak out about the incident Monday. Uh, racial profiling should not be dismissed. Petaluma Police Department did poor job pro protecting the Latinx couple they wrote on Instagram. Oh my gosh, this shit's going to blow up huge. Okay? Because now it's a Black Lives Matter thing that she racially profiled them. Allegedly. I, I don't know. I do find that on the Black Lives Matter side, when this thing happens and they assume something, just like everybody assumed Katie's story was true, you're going to have, compo this is what happens on social media. They're saying, well, she racially profiled us because we're in Black Lives Matter, which I don't know, unless Katie Sorensen has a history of being racist and we can find that stuff. You got to be really careful with that. You really do. But also on, on Katie's side, when she tells the story about these people and the photo comes out, she wasn't very careful. So everybody's just going to be in this big jumbled mess over in... Petaluma County. That's what's going to happen here. And unless you have proof of her being racist or anything like that, and now they're going to be digging. Katie Sorensen's life on Instagram and as a social media influencer is over. Um, and I don't think that that's, I don't know. You never want to see that. I mean, but if, if her intentions were ill and just wanted to build her own profile up because whatever, someone made a comment and I want to read this to you guys real quick because, and I was just, re just going through quick cause I got to get out of here. The comment was by, um, the comment was by Ms. Mordica. To those suggesting we offer her grace, please look into the long history of violence and inc incarcerations that were the result of white women's false accusations. Google Emmett Till. White women have weaponized their perceived vulnerability for ages. It's time for white women to see some repercussions for their dangerous accusations. Oh, This just got way bigger than uh, Katie Sorensen ever thought it was going to get. And now... There's going to be commentary. There's going to be everybody breaking the story left, right, and center. It is going to be insane. Go look at my video that I did about it um, where my red flags were raised. I don't know. There was She gave so much detail as to what she thought and perceived. But it was because she was panicking that she started thinking otherwise. I don't know. 
And then she did say outward that she's like, you know what? I'm not going to be afraid to basically racial profile. <laughs> she didn't say racial, but she just said they weren't clean gut is what she said. And Black Lives Matter and people who are fighting for that cause are going to take that as that she was racially profiling them. You guys have to just make your own choice on that whole thing. Unless there's evidence that she is racist, please be careful with that because you could definitely either get someone killed or definitely ruin their life. But at the same time, if she did do those things, if she did racially profile, um, then and if, and if Ms. Mordecai is right, you know, with the, with the result of white women's false accusations year over year and they've weaponized it, man, there is a lot to take in here. Do your own research and make sure you make informed decisions before you make a choice on both sides. But that's both sides of this coming in. Nobody, the couple has been cleared, so let that be the thing. Sorensen is definitely going to be going offline very soon. Just keep an eye on everything, okay? And be safe out there. And I'm going to continue with the video now. So, okay, so I want to just get right into it today. Dive right into the things that are happening. I don't know why I did that. A couple of great big updates are happening in, as far as the world of anti-MLMs are concerned. And that is that TikTok is removing MLMs or any Ponzi schemes. And I love that they connect them together. And they're like, we're going to remove all these things. And I cannot wait to see the videos about these MLMers and these pyramid schemers be like, it's not illegal because it's, it's not a pyramid scheme. It's not illegal. It's an MLM. You sell MLMs. MLMs are predatory, and we're going to be doing an uncovering video soon. Margaret and I are uncovering. She's been doing tons of research on that stuff, and so we're going to do kind of like a... I like the way that Spill did her video on Micah. Really, really good video. And I want to try doing a documentary-style video like that with, like, clips, interspersed with music and voiceovers. And so I want to talk about MLMs and, the, and the, how predatory they are and how they are connected to family vloggers because it goes pretty deep. Um, Asa and his wife, I forget Priscilla, they, they make a ton of money on their MLM, um, and they use their daughter to sell that. And I just, it's not a go for me. It's like a big no, no. Uh, it could be argued that they exploit their child, uh, already. Um, and I'm definitely doing a video on fathering autism really soon. I'm just trying to gather all the data I need to do that and kind of figure out how I'm going to deliver that because I don't want it to be about Abby and I don't want it to be about like the, you know, tearing down an autism awareness message, although I have, it's, I'm going to have to, it's, I'm going to have to walk a fine line. Right. Um, and it's going to be more about, I think the character of the, of the parents than it is about the message. Pizza, people like Tiffany Beeston and all these other Instagram influencers who sell oils to make a lot of money. I'm coming after them. So we're, we've, we've uncovered all of the videos where they make claims about what the oils do. And we're going to do this video about how it's all connected. Why is TikTok making this choice? And I think they're making a, a great choice because they're setting a precedent. And I hope that Instagram pops on and does that. And YouTube just says no more MLM schemes here. No more. The reason why people are starting to tear these, these MLMs down is because everybody knows they're predatory. And now this huge anti MLM culture is starting to happen on YouTube and all over the platform, Instagram. And I'm jumping on board because it's, you know, it's a, it's a hot topic. Um, yes, it's also, I fell into an, an MLM myself and I realized how predatory it was because it tends to target people. And I'm saying this and cause I have proof of it. It tends to target people who are poor, who are broke students, moms, stay at home people who don't have a lot. And they target you with this lifestyle, sell them the lifestyle. They say, I've got this text from a person who's on the inside right now with young living. And she, I, I told her to ask this person, you know, what can I do to, to bring people in there? I'm having a lot of people, you know, say negative things and they're like, and then she said this tech fact that they target these people and they, they try to sell them the lifestyle. They always say, sell the lifestyle, sell the lifestyle. And, and we have proof of them saying fake it till you make it. And they do, they all fake it. And one of the things we're going to uncover too, when it comes to TikTok influencers and all these people who use these platforms to sell oils and use their platform is that a lot of them didn't have to grind through the process of MLMs. They didn't have to rise up through the pyramid at all. A lot of them started at the top of the pyramid, which sucks because they make it sound like I worked hard to get here. Tiffany Beeston and uh, Kendall from Our Life and all these people who sell these oils um, and, the, and the Beachbody MLMs and all these things, a lot of them had platforms to begin with, right? And then they are approached by these brands like they are brand ambassadors. And they say, look, we're going to give you all this money to start talking about these oils. And then your downline is likely going to be your bonus. So there's no way that Tiffany Beeston has time to rise up through the ranks of Young Living to become the the, pla the level she's on. Like, what is she under? Like rainbow unicorn fart sprinkles level on, on Young Living. And she's just not, there's no way she had time to do that. You, again, you can't, she didn't sell anything. She was approached. And so we're going to talk about. You know, jumping ahead of this whole thing, no, one percent less than one percent are successful in this business anyway, and then that they get to talk about how they're successful in this business because they were approached by a company and paid already at the top. 
disingenuous, fake, and I hate that. And so when you when TikTok took this big jump, a lot of people are very happy about it. A lot of people are anti MLM, and there's a huge swath of people who are anti MLM right now. Like it's becoming a massive topic. People are jumping on board and everybody's like, oh, it's a trending topic because when people's eyes start getting open to certain things like, you know, exploitation of kids and family vlogging and MLMs, when people's eyes start opening, right? Here's what happens. That person then tells their friend, did you know about this? And then that person tells a friend. And then once the, the numbers explode enough to a degree where people get so upset, that's when people start making changes. I have an interview with Dr. Kurt coming on Sunday, I think, where he talks about this. He's like, in order to make real change, where all the money is protects where the money is, right? And so when people come up against the thing that has money, they don't have any money to fight it. No, there's no incentive to change it. And so the only way to change something is to gather in numbers and strength in numbers and ideology and go boom, 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 explode that. So uh, millions of people are like, okay, this is not good anymore. We have to change this culture. And so that's what that's what's happening right now in the in the conversation against family vlogging and exploiting the children and MLMs. It's a massive conversation. And that's why people are like, and then you're always going to get people like, well, you didn't care about it before. <laughs> Okay, fine. You didn't know about it before. That's what awareness is for. That's what I am standing here in this ugly sweater. I'm bringing awareness, right? Whereas family vloggers will say, well, we're bringing awareness to like autism and like to breastfeeding and to bra shopping and all stuff. Yeah, no. I'm actually bringing the conversation to the forefront. The awareness is of something that was people were unaware of before, right? Everybody who watches family vloggers you know, knows how to not let their kids get kidnapped. And like the awareness conversation is shitty on their side, but the awareness conversation on something that people didn't really know about. And the conversation that we're starting about, like, did you know that these people exploit their kids because they cannot have informed consent? That's something that's like, oh, I didn't know that. Now I'm going to explore that through that lens that you've just given me. And that's why people are jumping into the conversation with me here. That's why people are like, okay, I love what you're saying. I love what you're doing. And I, it worked whatever, for whatever reason that's working. I inadvertently became one of the leaders of this conversation. I would rather everybody became a leader of this conversation. I'm not saying that I'm the one who broke the story because it's absolutely not true. So many people were talking about this before, but for whatever reason, I jumped on board and COVID has, has people at home. And this is a perfect opportunity to talk about new ideas and explore new things that we might not have known about before or cared about. And that's why this year. And so TikTok, Love it that you guys are doing that. That is a huge, huge positive. And I think that you saw a trend happening and you jumped on it. Good for you because you're a corporation, your business and good for you. And I think that YouTube, Instagram, everybody else needs to jump on this platform. Get rid of MLMs. Okay, absolutely. And so let's dive into Douche Dad of the Day. Today's Douche Dad of the Day is James Stoffer. <laughs> good buddy of mine, one of my most ardent supporters. Uh, yeah, douche dad of the day. And here's why James is the douche dad of the day. Because James, if you didn't know this, has a channel called, what's his channel called? Stoffer Garage. Yeah, it's dumb. And he has built a platform off of the back of his adopted son from China. And you guys all know this, you know, and I'll keep talking about it. Did another snark video about them on Rumble yesterday because I just needed to boost in my... I just needed to laugh because I love watching their video. I, you know, a lot of people are going to hate me for, for making fun of them, but I honestly truly watch those videos and I, it makes me laugh because about how, how insanely fake they are. And it's just like, I don't even think they, they were probably like, why do people believe this shit? And so, uh, James Stoffer douched out of the day, just cause I need to keep bringing his, his name to the forefront of this conversation. He has over 1 million subscribers on his Stoffer garage. Um, and I don't believe that he deserves this platform because of what he did to that kid. And again, these people aren't coming out and it's like, even if they came out and apologized to H himself, they didn't come out and apologize to H. They came and apologized to the getting caught for getting caught and they did it wrong. And so many people, deaf noodles covers it. Spill covers it. People are going to continue to cover it. I will continue to cover it. It is still a huge trending topic. I'm going to be doing a video on them for the end of the year recap about what's been popping. You know, I'm going to do a, a, a full lid year. You know, full lid year, I'm going to cover what's the biggest topic since I've started on this platform in June and just going through that. And so I just wanted to make sure we keep making sure we realize that James is still the deep douche, douche dad of the day out there on this channel making bank and that we don't forget that uh, what he did. So, James, congratulations. You're the... I'll send you a certificate if you'd like. Also, head over to Rumble and watch my video. People like the snark videos, and so I'm going to continue to do them, and I like doing them. So, there you go. All right. What's happening in the world of church? 
there's a couple of things happening in the world of church. Okay, so if we look at um, what's happening at Hillsong. So we all know about Carl Lentz is falling apart. Um, probably going to be going through the, the shit pretty soon with everything in his life. If he hasn't already decided he's... I think his family has broken past the point of repair as far as I can see. Um, I'm pretty sure he's just going to just double down and go hard into the Playboy life because he's clearly wanted it anyway. And if you're going to cheat on your wife, you're just going to do that anyway. So I'm pretty sure he's just going to double down and go full on into Hollywood and do all the things using his connections and all that stuff to boost his own profile and continue to be famous. Um, but there's something else that happened as this stuff's coming out. And this is not going to be the last thing that comes out. But uh, MSN news and all these other news people are coming out with this article about former members of Hillsong in New York and other churches are coming forward with accusations of racism, anti-LGBTQ behavior and exploitation after Pastor Carl Lentz was fired. So what happens is what happens is this massive exodus happens when a massive pastor falls apart. And this is why I don't think that you should ever make a pastor a celebrity or, a, or I don't even think that a pastor should be ahead of a church. It's, it's the stupidest thing to do because when something happens and it generally does, the whole church falls apart, right? The whole place has a massive exodus because they're all following one man. They're not following Jesus. They're following the pastor. And that is t a terrible place to be. And so many of these mega churches are built off of one man. Somebody sent me a video and it was hilarious. It's like 45 minutes of pastors talking about themselves. And I'm low level going to dissect that video pretty soon. Just literally propping themselves up and like introducing each other. It's not that they're saying I'm amazing. They're like, all of you bow down right now. Stephen Furtick, we're so happy to have him here at this church. And, we, and they talk about each other like they're gods. He's one of the greatest and most gifted communicators around. It is such an honor and a privilege to be at Fresh Life. Make some noise. Be thankful for the gift that is in Pastor Stephen Furtick. Most pastors preach two good messages in their whole life. He just wrote a new one for next week right now that would be better than anything else somebody else could construct. Wow. How in the world do anyone preach like that? We and it's amazing. Like, it's incredible that people don't see this. Uh, it incredible. And so I'm going to dissect that video. But what happens here is that when you build your church on a celebrity pastor, this happens. The whole shit, the whole house of cards comes down because it's held up by one little dude who's an infallible human being. Right? He's not God. But these people think pastors are above it all. And a lot of pastors are not above it all. Most pastors sin just like anybody else. Every pastor does. I'm sorry. They all do. Every single one of them falls into sin at some level. And so when you when you put all of your hope and your faith into a pastor instead of God, and these churches do that, these mega churches are all built on celebrity pastors, it's all going to fall apart. And, and God is like, yeah, God is his hand in that. God's going to say, no, sorry. So several former volunteers said top pastors regularly took advantage of free and underpaid labor. In some cases, paid little or no money for volunteers to babysit their children. Believe it. Yeah, absolutely. Here's a problem with churches, okay? They abuse volunteers like they're going out of style. And they are going out of style. And churches are always trying to figure out ways to have... They hire full-time volunteer professionals to handle the volunteers. No joke. They hire, there is full-time gigs in a lot of churches, two or three positions where all their job is to do is to keep volunteers happy. It's to like recruit and keep volunteers happy because a church is useless without its volunteers. And they often say, well, it's service to God and blah, blah, blah. And you need to do this because it's all this, but churches will burn out volunteers. Like I've never seen. I worked at a church of over 2000, which is considered a mega church here. And I can't tell you how many volunteers I went through. I have 103 volunteers at the peak of my tenure at that church. And that was a band, 103 band members, okay? And I can't tell you how many times I just had to, uh, weekly, two, three people leave. And then I had to re and then we had to hold auditions and bring two, three people in. And then there are people complain about how these people weren't good enough and all that stuff. And they want you to, they want volunteers to be at a certain level and work all this stuff for free. And then they use the guise of, well, you're serving the Lord. And that's what people, they guilt you into serving. Right. And they'll get up on stage and say, we need volunteers on the kids wing because people are leaving in droves because kids are assholes. <laughs> right. Um, I think kids volunteers are the most mistreated in churches. And we can and I'm going to talk about that in the future. Um, but man, volunteers in general are treated like shit. They and often a lot of them will volunteer because they want to be connected to community. And that's a great place to do. And volunteering is a great thing to do. But when you're being taken advantage of and you know it, you should you should double double down. You should get away from that. That's toxic. And churches will do that. I know a lot of people who just, who volunteer and then they think they're part of a church, right? And they come to this church, it's a big mega church. They volunteer and then they volunteer because they want to be part of a community. And then they try to utilize that social currency that they've built up or that volunteer currency they built up because they may want a favor. 
or they might want to talk to the pastor or have an in or a say in something. And often they're ignored completely. They're like, now nah, you're volunteer. Volunteers are like this in churches. Like they, they are needed and churches understand why they are needed. And they have ov obviously the handlers and people that do volunteer celebrations and they do all the things that they want to do. But in the end, volunteers are just, they're just a means to an end and they'll just get another one. The volunteer turnover rate at mega churches is massive. Okay. And any church it's massive because they burn them out because they don't have a choice because often pastors and ministry professionals are overworked to a degree that they can't even do it. And they need to lean on volunteers. My church that I worked at was very lean in its staffing, even though over half its budget is staff. But if a church of that size, we were half the staff of a church of that size normally. And so we would, they would always be like, no, you need to lean into your volunteers. You need to create high level leader volunteers, meaning you'd have to spend even more time building into leaders, creating them, basically creating a position that would be paid normally into a volunteer by guilting them into saying, this is for Jesus. No joke. That's how they did that. And I lost so many volunteers. And then when someone had a falling out or a, a, they were a sinner or, you know, one of them was found to be gay and they're like, they're, they're gone. You know, you have no choice. You have to get rid of them and all that stuff. So, um, it's just a very dangerous place to be. So I say all that to say that, yeah, I absolutely believe that Hillsong absolutely takes uh, advantage of its volunteers. A lot of people want to be a volunteer at a church like Hillsong and Bethel and all these places because it's a status, not because they're like, look at me. It's because that's the community they want to be a part of. And they want to get into the inner circle in their inner sanctum of Hillsong. Hillsong protects its inner sanctum. Like it is a very cliquey place to be at Hillsong. Okay. A lot of people like in worship circles, if you say you lead worship at Hillsong, you're like, Oh really? You must be so amazing. Uh, the worship subculture in churches is very toxic, very narcissistic place to be. And I'm going to uncover that soon. I'm going to keep talking about that stuff. I can't continue to always talk about family vlogging. I will always do that. But again, as this new path forward is, I still have to continue to talk about this thing I'm passionate about, which is the deconstruction of church and religion and, I, and, and uncovering the shittiness of it all. And I will. And so I'm going to continue to do that. And that's why today's full Friday is important. So anyway. Several former volunteers didn't get paid. Um, 2017, former Hillsong Boston volunteer Tiffany Perez says she was asked to take care of the top pastor, Josh Kimes daughter, Lila, who was four at the time for 150 a week, probably full time too. 150 a week is like Perez often worked up to 24 hours, 25 hours a week babysitting. She said, when it, which comes out to about $6 an hour or half the minimum wage in Massachusetts. Yep. Perez also cleaned their home and looked after the dog. She said she was not paid extra for cleaning her dog care. No, because pastors will use this. A lot of churches will put pastors up on a pedestal and say, treat them better, treat them better. And it's like, it's bullshit. Like pastors get already treated very well in their churches because they're celebrities. Like I'm a, I was a celebrity in my church. People wanted to be my friend because I was a pastor and I was, you know, I, the culture was that way. And pastors don't get it twisted. Pastors have a hard time for sure because they are held to a higher standard and they should be, but man, they do also get very special treatment from their people because they are famous. They really are. They are the leaders of that church that people follow, right? They're influencers. So people want to be around them. So in 2015, a children's ministry volunteer asked to remain anonymous for, anonymous for safety. Crazy that this volunteer wants to ask to stay anonymous for safety reasons against the church. Said she was asked to look after the kids of Blaze Robertson. Blaze, oh my God, these pastors named it Micah, are these Micah's kids. The former head of Pastor Hillsong, Connecticut, and his wife, Desiree. It just kind of expected I would be compensated in some way, but they absolutely didn't. And again, they, pastors will take advantage of every absolute thing they can. Pastors want to be rich. These, these ones anyway. Two former Boston Hillsong volunteers and New York City volunteers said members they knew babies sat pastors' children for little or no pay. These former volunteers said Kimes' wife, Leanna Kimes, was one of Lentz's main babysitters between 2010 and 2017. Seven years. When Kimes was working as the associate pastor in New York. Crazy. Meanwhile, pastors like Lentz were, were treated like royalty by the Christian megachurch with private chauffeurs paid for by Hillsong and access to perks like courtside seats at Knicks games. Free, sir, free favors, Perez said, were viewed as a way to serve the church. Right? So you're going to treat this pastor to like brand new clothes and expensive shoes and watches and taking the Knicks games and chauffeur cards. That's a gift to the church. That's a tithe. That's bullshit. <laughs> How is that helping the, the poor and broken? Like the Bible says to do so when you're giving money to a pastor, Knicks courtside seats, which I imagine are thousands upon thousands of dollars, $10,000 watches and the clothes that they wear, all that stuff. It, they, a lot of people like they were gifted it. They were gifted because people liked them. Don't gift things to celebrity pastors. If you're going to give money as a tithe to the Lord, that is wasted. That is, you are, that's, I'm almost like, that's a sin. As far as I'm concerned, you have all this ability to do good things and you're going to give already a rich person shit he doesn't actually need. No. Once you go feed, once you give a thousand dollars that you're going to pay for that sh those pair of shoes, give that thousand dollars to your local food bank. That food bank can triple that in its value. 
because the food banks have buying power. Anyway, I digress. Hillsong refers it to as honoring, Perez said. But over the years, I wonder if it's really honoring or is he just being taken advantage of? Exactly, Perez. Perez, if you're listening to this, I would love to interview you because I'm a pastor, an ex-pastor of a church who definitely had his hand in taking advantage of volunteers too because I had no choice because that's just the culture right? And they, they breed that into you too. The language that they breed into you is very, very similar when the leaders are like, no, no, these people need to serve. It's almost like an MLM itself. It's almost like it's like your downline. You, you bring up high level volunteers who then bring up other volunteers under them. It, a church is basically an MLM. It really is. It's about paying the top person and, and, and uh, convincing all these people under them to pay the top person. It's really all it is. It's insane. And then we're going to dive into my favorite asshole, Joel Osteen, who's a complete asshole and his wife's an asshole and their church is an asshole. Um, Joel Osteen's mega church got $4.4 million in COVID-19 grant money. Not cool, Joel Osteen. Houston, Texas, Lakewood Church, the Houston mega church where televangelist Joel Osteen preaches received $4.4 million from loan from the federal government as part of the Paycheck Protection Program designed to help small business survived the coronavirus pandemic. The loan was approved this past summer. Multimedia outlets have reported. It was the largest. It was one of the largest loans approved for Houston area, according to Houston's Business Journal. Unbelievable. Osteen, whose reported net worth is around $100 million, and it's more than that. Trust me, Osteen is worth over $150 million. Has led the Lakewood Church since inheriting it from his father. Like, I'm sorry, if you're worth $100 million and you're a pastor, maybe just this year, take half of your wealth and you wouldn't even need to. You only may, might need to give about 10 million of your 150 million. Maybe not even that. I don't even know. To the staff that work for you and just say, I'm not going to take any money. Here's a tiny sliver of my wealth because I want you guys all to make sure you continue to get paid and all that stuff. Instead, no, he takes it from the government because they can. And the government allows it. This is why churches this size need to not be tax exempt. They don't need it. They absolutely don't need it. Let the smaller churches keep their tax exempt status and get all the benefits. But churches that have pastors who make over a hundred million dollars. Nope. They are no longer. It's gotta be an echelon. The government has to step in and get with the times and say, okay, well, if your church's annual budget's over $10 million, you don't, there's no way that you now can benefit from like tax free, um, you know, property taxes and like tax free, all this stuff. You can still give your, your, your congregation, you know, tax, receipts for their giving, but in the same time, you're not going to enjoy all these other benefits. If you, if your budget's over a certain amount, that's got to happen. So Joel Osteen, asshole pastor of the day. That's a new thing I made. All right. What else is going on in the world? Let's talk about this. Sloan is uncovering it a, a couple of times and I've been in the back head of course as well. Um, a couple of people reaching out to me about her. So I'm, I'm in the back end of Brianna K's course. Okay. And Sloan is uncovering it too. And everybody else is talking about how this is shitty. I'm getting people messaging me about, um, how bad it is and how they got taken advantage of. And if you go into the back end of her course, you're going to find that it's not just a thousand bucks to get there and watch shitty, shittily made videos because I can, I know she can make decent videos. I've seen it, but these videos are garbage. Okay. They're like put together hastily. They are not very well done. I'm watching them and I'm like, this is absolute trash. Nobody can get anything from this. And if there is anybody that does get something from this, it's very, very, very minimal. It's not worth a thousand dollars. Not, and it's basically not anything you can't find on YouTube for free, by the way. That's all I'm going to say about that. So I've had a bunch of people reach out to me. I'm going to, I've been deep diving and they're re releasing statements and comments about what's going on and how they don't feel like they've received anything from it. So Brianna K, do yourself a favor. Okay. And just stop that. You are being predatory in that what you're doing there. You're taking advantage of fans by using your fame to say, hey, come talk to me. And they don't get to talk to you. They get to see pre-made videos that are shitty. And then if you go into the back end, you'll see the thing that says, pay me another thousand dollars and you can talk to me twice for two for one hour each. That's basically what she says. Pay me a thousand bucks and then I'll talk to you face to face. Could you imagine? Look, I understand that people want advice from people who have done good, who've, who've been successful. I do consultations for people, right? I will never take money from somebody who doesn't have enough money to do a consultation. If you, if you're wealthy and you want me to come set you up a YouTube channel and do all that stuff for you. And I know that you're wealthy and I'm like, you're just like, Hey, I want to do this and I want to take a shortcut. I want to use your considerable knowledge that you've gained to do such a thing. I'm happy to take your money and help you get to where you need to be. But if you're not wealthy and you're just trying to do something good and you're being a creator, I will help you right? I won't be able to fly out to you and do all the things, but I will always help those around me. I think it's indicative of people who talk about how they're just here to help and be a influence, a good and all that stuff that you take a thousand bucks from people that generally can't really afford it. 
And this lady said there was over a hundred people in that Facebook group and people felt like there's too many here. There's no way we can get one-on-one attention creating big, a question. Then she answer like in general generalities. There's no way if you're going to pay a thousand bucks to somebody, man, you better get some one-on-one -on -one help. And I think a lot of people thought maybe wrongly that they were getting some one-on-one -on -one help and they did not. They thought that these zoom calls would be one-on-one -on -one, and they're really not it's just about her. Here's a pre-made video. Take a look. If you have any questions, I'll, you know, maybe I'll answer it. And her answers are short and they're not very concise. They're concise and they're not very helpful. And it's because she doesn't have time. She dove into something that she didn't have time, but she made over a hundred thousand dollars and maybe more because how many of those hundred people paid the extra thousand bucks to get the one-on-one -on -one support now? A fool and his money will soon be parted. And so if those people have extra income to do that, so be it. Not going to blame you. Maybe you wanted it. Maybe you got something out of it. But at the same time, there's nothing that she's telling you in that back end of that course that you can't just get online for free, for real. And so I've decided in myself, I'm going to do a series of videos as well. Kind of, I'm going to watch her videos and I'm going to break it down in my own language about what you can do. And that's the video. I'm going to be doing that because there's just no way you need to be paying this lady a thousand bucks to give you advice that you can find for free. And it's shitty advice, to be honest. It's not really even that good. YouTube is relatively simple and you can, you can really find out how to, how to get where you need to go. There's a lot of, sh it's relatively simple when you have the shortcuts that I've learned. Okay. Yes. It has taken me seven months to get to a level where I'm kind of sort of really understanding how to do that. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be successful. Even if you understand the secrets of the tags and the th thumbnails and all that stuff. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be good. What brings people to the yard is your content. Content is king in this platform. I don't ever hear her saying that. <laughs> She's just like, yeah, your stuff's good. Look, if your stuff is good and I think it's good and you approach me with something's good, I'm going to help you for free because I think in the end we might make a partnership agreement. She's not interested in that. She's telling people, yeah, you're amazing. Nah, 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 and none of these people are amazing. They're all shit. They're all the same. Not none of them. I say most of them are just trying to copy her. And I think that content is shit. So that's kind of why I say that. But just why don't you just anyway, I'll do what I can to help you. And I'm going to be doing some videos on other ways to do because a lot of people are like, well, I want to do a family vlog because it's a good way to bring a residual income in on the side because I'm a stay at home mom. And why not use that? Blah, blah, blah. Sure. You want to clean in your tights and all that stuff, but just don't use your kids. Right. But at the same time, there are other ways you can make big money. And I'm going to show you guys how to do those things if you want to put the time in. But never, ever is there ever going to be a way to make big money. Everybody listen to me without putting big time work into it. Okay. The amount of work you put into something you're passionate about, you will get, a, a, you will get it returned probably tenfold. But if you don't put any work in, you expect to work half an hour a day and you think you're going to get rich, not going to happen. E-commerce is one of those platforms I'm going to talk to you guys about. You can make a lot of money off e-commerce. James does it on his Fox clean site. It's just drop shipping. Uh oh, so it's just drop shipping. You want to say hi, Sam? Say hi. Say hi. So it's just basically drop shipping. You find a product from China, from AliExpress, and you 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 just you put it in your Shopify store, and then they ship it for you. It's like this, it's like the simplest thing you could possibly do. So it's not like, oh, there's Sam's bum on my head. That's nice, Sam. Thanks, dude. You're a good boy, Sammy. So Brianna K, just take some advice and just shut it down. Like, give it for free. Why don't you just be a nice person and be like, you know what? I thought about this. And yeah, this course isn't really anything good. Maybe you can just sell the one on one, you know, a thousand bucks. Sure. If somebody wants to meet you for a thousand bucks because you're famous, I'm not going to, you know, sure. If you got the extra money, go for it. A lot of people want to meet people that they think are famous. And I'm not going to shade anybody for doing that. If that's something that you enjoy and you want to meet someone and you have the extra income to do so, then so be it. Go for it. Absolutely. But take the shitty one down, you know, do the thousand bucks, do the two or three hours face to, I, I can, I can agree with that. You know, if, even if you just want to meet someone and hang out with them for a thousand bucks, sure, it's weird, but I get it. You want to say hi? Here's Gus. Hey, Gus, Gus. Say hi. Say hi, Gus, Gus. Oh, why do you smell like Cheetos? What did you eat? If you guys are wondering about the updates on the, on the Brianna K striking me, um, the last thing has gone through and she now has to prove to YouTube that she's going to take me to court and sue me. Otherwise my strikes are gone and my videos go back up. And once that happens, we're going full bore all the way in again. So just be aware of that. All right, let's get into the main story that I was going to talk about today, which is the Jacob Roloff story. Um, very, very sad story. And I'm going to kind of equate this to a, the problem with family vloggers. And I, it's not hard to get there to be honest with you. Okay. Now, Jacob Roloff has come out and said that he's been, he was abused by his ex former executive producer for Little People Big World, Chris Cardamone. He's not going to provide details, and good for him, um, of this encounter at any point publicly. I do hope he is never allowed around children again. So clearly something heinous went down from Chris Cardamone, and I hope he ends up in prison for it, if he hasn't already. 
I first began contemplating the statement when he texted me years later, November 2015. I chose I choose to disclose it now as it remains a traumatic memory that needs to be exercised of any further power over my development. This kid is smart, by the way. Like, I'm listening to the way he, he reads books. <laughs> you know, not like Micah reads books. It's this kid reads. I can tell by the way he is thought out. Um, smart kid. Like, this kid's brilliant. Um, by revealing this, I may more fully understand in my perspective on issues such as child abuse, child exploitation, and collateral costs of reality te television may be received more clearly. Although, I would have to... I would have to add that this experience has not solely defined my point of view on any of these issues, nor has it defined my worldview in general. Okay, good. That's good for you. This may also serve as a reminder that the experience of SA in all its iteration in all its iterations can happen to anyone at any time, and as far as a more prevalent reality than our current social stigma allows us to talk about. True. Why not speak out sooner? A child must process, and I needed and I needed silence and time. Hey, respect, dude. People that come out later, a lot of the arguments from people who are supporters of the person like a lot of the argument can be made like, why don't you come out sooner? They hurt people in the meantime. But you know what? It's it, this stuff when it comes to SA, it took me years and years and years and years, like 25 years to come to the realization of what happened to me was not my fault. And it took me, it was just an, a wake up eye opening craziness. So I get it. Okay. So I continue to own my own contemplation on the voyeurism involved in the entire enterprise of reality television. It's not your fault though, dude, you were a kid. A massive spectacle of drama and pain and argument and invasion with a little joy sprinkled over that. Viewers watch completely disassociated from the complex human side of the simplistic characters they see on TV. This, this guy is brilliant. This guy would be a force against family vlogging. I hope, Jacob, you're listening to this. I doubt you are. But man, you could be a force for this because you lived it and now you're on the other side of it and your experience needs to be heard so that these family vloggers can hear it. Yet there is no inherent causal connection between reality te television production and childhood trauma. I don't, I don't know, man. I tend to believe that, yeah, I mean, yeah, he could be right. But we're still sprinting ahead with the Enterprise. Deaf, dumb, and blinded. Asking for forgiveness later. Instead of asking harder preliminary questions of ourselves. Amazing. This kid is like, dang. This kid's, yeah. This is what, and you'll hear this, Dr. Kirk will say this too, is that we're all, we're, we're always like, we always do the thing until shit happens. And then we're like, oh, sorry. Why don't we always do the thing initially that's to protect children first and then think about, and then what we always do is we do the bad thing first and then we're like, oh, we didn't see it coming. Nah, he's right. What he's saying is right. The prophets were indeed sweet. The actual experience was more complicated. There could not be a better statement to family vlogging and exposing your children than this one sentence right here. The prophets were indeed sweet. The actual experience was more complicated. Yes. I often ask sincerely, I, I often ask sincerely from this complex perspective, is it simply taken as granted that we should be capable of watching someone grow up week by week on TV? How does the environment of prying eyes, both lens and audience affect self perception? Exactly. That's the question we don't have the answer to. And yet we still continue to do those stuff without any of these answers. How are material amenities weighed against the subjective psychological effects? Has anyone defined these lines? Studied it? Should we need to study it? Yes, we should. Absolutely. Dr. Kirk Hondans. This is brilliant. I can't believe I'm reading this. Dr. Kirk will say this on Sunday and I'm, I'm giving everything away. But he's like, yeah, we have to find people who are doing their dissertations and studies on these things. And we have to get them to talk about this. So much of reality television is simply a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. It must finally be emphasized that all fault lies with the predator and no fault lies with any of my family members. So, thank God. I'm certain that this is a positive moment for me and another step forward to a brighter future. In solidarity with silent survivors, Jacob Roloff. Jacob Roloff, 100%, bro. Straight up, bro, you are 100% a hero. You have a voice here in this talk, and what we're talking about now is a big deal. What I'm talking about, the exploitation of children, is exactly what you went through. Now, your experience with being SA'd is not exactly what I think I'm talking about, but it is very indicative of what you're saying overall, is that we're opening... This lens that is on your family. Are we even take stop uh, all these families, all these fans of family vloggers? Are you ta are you stopping a second to realize the ramifications of what you're doing? The zoo culture that you're permeating, that you're looking into someone's life, that they're allowing you to look into, and do you not see the perversion of that a little bit, just a little bit? Now I understand that some people will say I do it for you know inspiration on how to be a mom and all this stuff, but there's a lot of perversion that goes into uh, trying to see a girl's first period, um, period shopping shaving her legs, uh, going bra shopping, uh, showing her acne, arguments, all these concerns, and all this craziness that goes on. There's so much perversion, even if it's like, take out the predators, for example. Take them out of this equation for a second. There's so much perversion, even if you're just innocently watching it, that's perversion. 
And you need to take a second and look at somebody like Jacob Roloff who's telling you, guys, we need to study this because we don't know what's going to happen to these kids afterwards and we don't. So this is a huge conversation because he lived the life. And although he, look, I can't, I can't speak of this line enough. The profits are sweet. The experience is complicated. The experience often leaves kids wanting. There's so much I can pull out from this article. Listen to this, everybody who follows family vloggers. Read this guy's statement. You, a lot of you probably watch, those people who watch family vloggers likely watch Little People Big World. Listen to him. Is it simply taken for granted that we should be capable? And I'm going to change that. Should we be allowed to watch someone grow up week by week on TV? Where, especially when there can be no informed consent, which we'll talk about on Sunday with Dr. Kirk. Unbelievable Jacob Roloff, man. I hope you start this platform to help bring protections forth for kids that were in your situations. Uh, family vlogging is just reality television. It's just on YouTube and there's no protections for it. And whenever there's something that can be taken advantage of, you better believe people are going to take advantage of it. That's just the way this world works. That's inherent human nature. And that's what's happening here. That's an incredible conversation, Jake Roll, that you've started. And I hope that just spirals into a better world for kids on the internet. Incredible what you've done there. And if you have the wherewithal and you don't hate me, Jake Roll, for, you know, in, in general, I don't really like what happened to you. And I don't like family vlogging. I don't like reality television. Um, but I would love to have you on the show. Uh, talk about your experience. And really, really dig deep into what we could be doing better for these kids. Because maybe I don't even know. Because I don't have my kids on, you know, I don't know what's going to... I know my kids are basically protected, they're shielded, but you weren't. And so I would love to hear your experience. And even if you don't do it with me, man, start your own YouTube channel and go for it. Because you are a voice for... You are a powerful voice in this conversation. And I think that I would love to hear you talk up. So if you guys are out there listening to me, why don't you tweet this video at Jacob Roloff and see... Or Instagram him and say, I would love for you to, to check out this video Josh made. Jacob, if you're listening... Find a way to get your voice heard, talk about your experiences, um, and tell people how the sausage is made. I think once people see how the sausage is made a lot of times, then you're gonna people are gonna be disenfranchised. Because yeah, you made money and I think what your experience was probably wasn't that good and it was a lot of it's fake. But if, again, if we're showing how the sausage is made, people start being like, eh. When you are educated in something and understanding how it's made or created, then you are you can make a more informed decision on how you're going to ingest that. I do believe that's a big one, and that's why I do the teardown videos. That's why I do the snarky stuff, because I'm like telling you guys how this shit's made and how fake it is. So, that being said, thank you for joining me. Folded Friday, 6 p.m. tonight. We are doing our. I got boxes to open, galore. So, uh, Tom's coming over, I think, or he's going to be on camera, and we're going to be opening our Secret Santa gifts at 6 p.m. on Twitch. I will give you guys the link to the uh, stream yard, and then I'll be putting six people in at a time. We're going to have some fun. We're going to sing some songs. We're going to drink some hot cocoa. We're going to have some fun. We're going to make jokes and laugh. And I might do a, uh, if I have some time today, I'm going to do a Micah Christmas reaction video, and uh, just because we need that. We need that to just to, to, to have fun. Head over to Rumble. I've got videos on there you won't see anywhere else but Rumble. So make sure you head over there and do that thing. And uh, man, just understand how valuable you are and protect the kids around you. Know that I appreciate you for just watching this video. If you don't comment, react, whatever, um, even if you hate me, watching this video and these conversations happen are really, really important. And spreading this word to your sphere of influences is really important. So please follow along. And uh, be there with us and make sure you head over to Rumble. And also follow me on Instagram. That is how I grow this platform. That is how I gain a bigger voice. And um, if you do have the capacity to reach out to Jacob Roloff, um, reach out to him. Let him know that I'd love to chat with him. That uh, I'm a dad who's concerned. And that's my main fight here is to stop the exploitation of children. I think he'll be on board for that. Um, anyway, thank you so much for being you. For being awesome. Protect kids around you. Love yourself. Protect yourself too and your heart. With this anxiety that's been building up in me, a lot of people are asking me why I'm losing weight and uh, the generalized anxiety. The, the, the anxiety is back full force in my life and it's been years since it's been here. I'm definitely going to see the doctor. Um, I, if you do see me go off for a little while, um, know that it's probably just because I'm taking a mental health break. Um, but yeah, this anxiety stuff is, I'm saying this to you because protect yourself. Like in the end, I think this conversation is important, but I, don't, I will not sacrifice who I am and me being a good dad and being attentive to my children for this cause. I want to make that clear. The cause is important, but it's not more important than my children or my family at all. And anxiety 
does not do good things to me. It does, I don't want to be touched. And I know a lot of people have reached out to me about their anxiety. And that might be a video that we have to make soon. Maybe I have to make a video about generalizing anxiety disorder, what it means and how it manifests itself and bring awareness to it. <laughs> but uh, my story about anxiety and uh, what's happening when you get a whole ton of hate on the internet and what it does for you, uh, for your mental health, right? And so uh, when you, but when you do put yourself in this platform, you are open to that. And that's just the way that that works. I'm not trying to sad fish here. I'm not trying to say, oh, oh woe is me. No, no, no. I put myself out there. I should be able to take it, right? I dish it out, I should be able to take it. And that's the thing. But if it gets too much for me, I'm going to be smart enough to be like, sorry, my family is more important than anything else. So thank you for watching. And I will see you this afternoon if you're going to be there. Even if you don't have gifts, come on over to the live. It's fine. It's going to be fun. It's going to have some fun. And then tomorrow, hopefully I can now start posting on my Dad Challenge podcast channel. And that's going to be the Dr. Crick interview. So stay tuned. It's so good. Have a great day, everybody. You're amazing.